The cryptocurrency was invented in 2008 by an unknown person or group of people using the name Satoshi Nakamoto. A cryptocurrency is a digital currency designed to work as a medium of exchange through a computer network that is not reliant on any central authority, such as a government or bank, to uphold or maintain it. The very first cryptocurrency created is known as Bitcoin. Bitcoin was created as a way for people to engage in financial transactions without exclusively relying on banks or governments. It's possible to get filthy rich by investing in cryptocurrency in 2022 but you could also lose all of your money. Investing in crypto assets is risky but also potentially extremely profitable. With cryptocurrency, the transaction cost is low to nothing at all unlike, for example, the fee for transferring money from a digital wallet to a bank account. Computer science is the study of computers and computing as well as their theoretical and practical applications. It became an independent service in the early 1960s, although the electronic digital computer was invented earlier. The main elements of computer science are in the fields of mathematics, electrical engineering, physics and management information systems. Mathematics is the source of two key concepts in the development of the computer, and the idea that all information can be represented as sequences of zeros and ones. In the binary number system, numbers are represented by a sequence of the binary digits 0 and 1, in the same way that numbers in the familiar decimal system are represented using the digits 0 through 9. Management information systems provide ideas from which various computer science concepts such as sorting, searching databases, and information usage evolved, where computer scientists check algorithms to study the performance of computer hardware and software. A programming language is a notation for writing programs, which are specifications of a computation or algorithm. A computer programming language is a language used to write computer programs, which involves in performing some kind of computation or algorithm and possibly controlling external devices such as printers and disk drives. A machine language consists of the numeric codes for the operations that a particular computer can execute directly. The codes are strings of zeros and ones or binary digits. Machine language instructions typically use some bits to represent operations, such as addition, and some to represent operands, or perhaps the location of the next instruction. It is difficult to read and write, since it does not resemble conventional mathematical notation or human language, and its codes vary from computer to computer. Assembly language is any low-level programming language, in which there is a very strong correspondence between the instructions in the language and the architecture's machine code instructions. As the computer industry has developed increasingly powerful processors at lower costs, microprocessors have become ubiquitous. They are used to control automated assembly lines, traffic signal systems, and retail inventory systems which are embedded in consumer products such as automobile fuel injection systems, kitchen appliances, audio systems, cell phones, and electronic games. Computers and networks are everywhere in the workplace. Word and document processing, electronic mail, and office automation are integrated with desktop computers, printers, database systems, and other tools using wireless networks and widespread internet access. Such changes ultimately make office work much more efficient, though not without cost for purchasing and frequently upgrading the necessary hardware and software as well as for training workers to use the new technology. Social media is defined as a forms of electronic communication, such as websites for social networking and microblogging through which users create online communities to share information, ideas, personal messages, and other content, such as videos. The earliest methods of communicating across great distances used written correspondence delivered by hand from one person to another. In other words, letters. In 1792, the telegraph was invented. This allowed messages to be delivered over a long distance far faster than a horse and rider could carry them. The pneumatic post, developed in 1865, 
created another way for letters to be delivered quickly between recipients where a pneumatic post utilizes underground pressurized air tubes to carry capsules from one area to another. In 1997, Andrew Weinreich launched Six Degrees which was the first recognizable social media site that enabled users to upload a profile and make friends with other users. After the invention of blogging, social media began to explode in popularity. Sites like MySpace and LinkedIn gained prominence in the early 2000s, and sites like Photobucket and Flickr facilitated online photo sharing. YouTube came out in 2005, creating an entirely new way for people to communicate and share with each other across great distances. By 2006, Facebook and Twitter both became available to users throughout the world. These sites remain some of the most popular social networks on the internet. Other sites like Tumblr, Spotify, Foursquare and Pinterest began popping up to fill specific social networking niches. Today, there is a tremendous variety of social networking sites, and many of them can be linked to allow cross-posting. This creates an environment where users can reach the maximum number of people without sacrificing the intimacy of person-to-person -person communication. We can only speculate about what the future of social networking may look like in the next decade or even 100 years from now, but it seems clear that it will exist in some form for as long as humans are alive. Artificial intelligence, or AI and machine learning or ML are buzzwords that have been around for some time now. These fields are advancing rapidly, and they are transforming the way we live and work. In this video, we will cover the basics of AI and MLL, including the different types of machine learning, deep learning, and real-world applications of these technologies. First, let's define what artificial intelligence or AI is. AI refers to the ability of machines or computer programs to perform tasks that typically require human intelligence. Examples of such tasks include visual perception, speech recognition, decision-making, and natural language processing. One important aspect of AI is machine learning, or MLL machine learning, is a subset of AI that involves building systems that can automatically learn and improve from experience without being explicitly programmed. Machine learning algorithms can be broadly classified into two categories, supervised learning and unsupervised learning. In supervised learning, the machine learning algorithm is trained on a labeled data set. This means that the correct output is already known and the algorithm's goal is to learn a function that maps inputs to outputs. For example, in image classification, the algorithm would be trained on a data set of labeled images and learn to correctly classify new images based on what it has learned from the training data. On the other hand, in unsupervised learning, the machine learning algorithm is given an unlabeled data set and must identify patterns and structures on its own. Clustering is an example of unsupervised learning where the algorithm groups similar data points together. Another important aspect of machine learning is deep learning. Deep learning is a type of machine learning that involves building artificial neural networks that can learn from large amounts of data. These neural networks can have several layers and the learning is done through a process of backpropagation. Deep learning has led to significant breakthroughs in computer vision, speech recognition, and natural language processing. One example of this is image recognition, where deep learning algorithms can accurately identify objects and scenes within images. AI and ML have many real-world applications, such as self-driving cars, virtual assistants, fraud detection, and personalized recommendations. In the healthcare industry, AI and ML are being used to diagnose diseases, analyze medical images, and predict patient outcomes. In the financial sector, AI and ML are used for fraud detection, credit risk assessment, and investment predictions. And in the field of environmental sustainability, AI and ML are being used to analyze climate data and optimize resource utilization. However, the use of AI and ML also raises ethical concerns, such as bias and privacy. It's essential to ensure that these technologies are developed and deployed responsibly with transparency and accountability. In conclusion, artificial intelligence and machine learning are exciting and rapidly evolving fields that offer great potential for innovation and advancement. By understanding the basics of AI and MLA, we can appreciate their impact on our world and explore ways to harness their power for the greater good. Let us talk about the impact of e-commerce on traditional brick-and-mortar businesses. 
E-commerce has transformed the way we shop and do business, and its impact has been felt across all industry. Today, I want to explore the ways in which e-commerce has disrupted traditional retail models and the challenges and opportunities that this presents for businesses and consumers alike. E-commerce has revolutionized the way we shop and conduct business, offering unprecedented levels of convenience, choice, and accessibility to consumers worldwide. Today, consumers can buy almost anything online, from groceries and clothing to electronics and household items, with just a few clicks of a button. This convenience has led to an exponential growth in the e-commerce industry, with online sales projected to reach $6.50 trillion by 2023, according to statistics. However, as the e-commerce industry continues to expand, Traditional brick-and-mortar businesses are finding it increasingly difficult to compete. These businesses, which have long been the backbone of local communities and economies, are struggling to adapt to the changing retail landscape and the rise of online shopping. In this introduction, we will explore the impact of e-commerce on traditional brick-and-mortar businesses and the challenges and opportunities that this presents for businesses, consumers, and society at large. To begin, it is important to understand what e-commerce is and how it differs from traditional retail models. E-commerce, or electronic commerce, refers to the buying and selling of goods and services over the Internet. This can take many forms, including online marketplaces, e-commerce platforms, and social media channels. E-commerce has several advantages over traditional retail models, such as lower overhead costs, the ability to reach a wider audience and greater convenience for consumers. One of the primary impacts of a commerce on traditional brick and mortar businesses is the increasing competition that they face from online retailers. With the convenience and accessibility of online shopping, many consumers are choosing to shop online rather than in physical stores. This has led to a decline in foot traffic and sales for traditional retailers which are struggling to adapt to the changing retail landscape. In addition, e-commerce has also led to the closure of many traditional brick-and-mortar businesses, particularly those that are unable to compete with online retailers on price, selection, and convenience. This has resulted in job losses and economic dislocation in many local communities, particularly in rural and small-town areas. Moreover, the rise of e-commerce has also had an impact on the real estate market, as many retailers are downsizing their physical footprint or closing stores altogether. This has led to a glut of vacant retail space, which can have a negative impact on property values and local economies. However, e-commerce also has several disadvantages, such as the lack of personal interaction with customers, the need for effective online marketing, and the challenges of shipping and logistics. These disadvantages have led to the closure of many traditional brick and mortar businesses and the loss of jobs and economic activity in local communities. One of the key factors contributing to the rise of e-commerce is the increasing prevalence of smartphones and mobile devices. In 2021, over 3.8 billion people worldwide were estimated to own a smartphone, according to statistics. This widespread ownership has made it easier than ever for consumers to shop online as they can do so from anywhere at any time. Social media has also played a significant role in the growth of e-commerce as businesses can use platforms like Facebook and Instagram to reach and engage with customers. The convenience of online shopping has also been a major driver of e-commerce growth as consumers can compare prices, products and reviews from multiple retailers with just a few clicks. This has put pressure on traditional retailers to adapt and offer comparable levels of convenience and accessibility to consumers. Despite these challenges, there are several opportunities that brick-and-mortar businesses can leverage to remain competitive in a rapidly changing marketplace. One of the key advantages that traditional retailers have over online retailers is the ability to offer a personalized in-store experience. By providing exceptional customer service, unique products, and engaging store environments, brick-and-mortar businesses can create a sense of community and loyalty among their customers. Another opportunity for traditional retailers 
is to leverage technology to enhance the in-store experience. For example, retailers can use digital signage, mobile apps, and interactive displays to engage with customers and provide a seamless shopping experience. By embracing technology, traditional retailers can also collect valuable data on customer behavior and preferences, which can inform their marketing and sales strategy. Furthermore, Brick-and-mortar businesses can also leverage their physical presence to offer unique services and experiences that online retailers cannot match. For example, retailers can offer in-store events, workshops, and classes to engage with customers and build brand loyalty. They can also partner with local businesses and organizations to create a sense of community and support local economies. To remain competitive, in a rapidly changing marketplace, brick and mortar businesses must embrace innovation and adapt to the evolving needs and preferences of their customers. One approach is to invest in online sales channels, such as websites or social media platforms, to reach a wider audience. By offering online ordering, delivery, and curbside pickup, traditional retailers can compete with online retailers on convenience and accessibility. Another approach is to embrace omnichannel retail models that combine online and in-store sales channels. By integrating online and offline shopping experiences, retailers can offer a seamless shopping experience to customers and create a sense of consistency and reliability across all touchpoints. Finally, retailers must also prioritize customer service and experience, both online and in-store, by providing exceptional customer service personalized recommendations, and engaging store environments. In conclusion, e-commerce has had a profound impact on traditional brick-and-mortar businesses, disrupting the way we shop and do business. While e-commerce offers numerous advantages to consumers and businesses alike, it has also presented challenges for traditional retailers, which have long been a vital part of local communities and economies. By understanding the challenges and opportunities that e-commerce presents, businesses can adapt and innovate to remain competitive in a rapidly changing marketplace. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I would like to talk to you about one of the most fascinating subjects in the world, geography and culture. As humans, we all live on this beautiful planet we call Earth. But how much do we really know about our... How much do we understand about the different people and cultures that inhabit it? Geography is the study of the physical features of the Earth, including its landforms, oceans, climate, and natural resources. It is a fundamental subject that provides us with a better understanding of the world we live in. It helps us to understand how the Earth's physical features shape our lives and impact the way we interact with each other. Cultures, on the other hand, are the beliefs, customs, practices, and social behavior of a particular group of people. Cultures vary widely across the world and are shaped by a variety of factors, including history, religion, language, and geography. Understanding different cultures is essential to building bridges between people and promoting peace and harmony in our increasingly interconnected world. So let's start by exploring the geography of our planet. Our world is divided into seven continents, which are all unique in their own way. Each continent has its own distinct physical features, such as mountains, deserts, forests, and rivers. For example, North America is home to the Rocky Mountains, the Grand Canyon, and the Mississippi River, while Asia boasts the Himalayan Mountains, the Gobi Desert, and the Yangtze River. In addition to its physical features, Geography also affects the climate and natural resources of different regions. For instance, the tropical rainforests of South America are rich in biodiversity, while the deserts of Africa are home to unique species adapted to the harsh conditions. Understanding the geography of a region is critical to understanding its people, their way of life, and the challenges they face. Now let's move on to cultures. The world is home to over 7.9 billion people, and each person belongs to a particular culture. There are over 7,000 distinct cultures in the world, each with its own unique customs, traditions, and practices. Culture is an essential part of our identity and shapes the way we think, behave, and interact with others. One of the most significant factors that shape culture is history. The history of a particular region 
can have a profound impact on its culture, beliefs, and values. For example, the history of Europe is marked by a long tradition of art, literature, and philosophy, while the history of Africa is marked by colonialism, slavery, and the struggle for independence. Another significant factor that shapes culture is religion. Religion plays a vital role in many cultures around the world, shaping people's beliefs, values, and social behavior. For instance, Christianity is the predominant religion in Europe and the Americas, while Islam is the predominant religion in the Middle East and North Africa. Language is another critical aspect of culture. There are over 7,000 languages spoken in the world, each with its own unique grammar, syntax, and vocabulary. Language not only helps people communicate, but it also shapes their worldview and cultural identity. For example, the English language has had a significant impact on global culture, with English words and phrases becoming common in many languages around the world. Finally, geography also plays a role in shaping culture. The physical features of a region can influence its food, clothing, and architecture. For example, the Inuit people who live in the Arctic regions have developed a unique culture that is adapted to the harsh conditions of their environment. Their clothing is made of warm animal furs, and their food is primarily fish and meat. Similarly, the Maasai people who live in the grasslands of East Africa have a culture that is centered around cattle, which are used for food, milk, and as a symbol of wealth. As we can see, geography and culture are deeply intertwined, and understanding one helps us to understand the other. By studying geography and culture, we can gain a better appreciation for the diversity and complexity of our world. We can learn to respect and appreciate the differences between people and cultures, and we can work towards creating a more peaceful and harmonious world. So how can we learn more about geography and culture? One way is to travel and explore different regions of the world. Traveling allows us to experience first and the physical features, food, and customs of different regions. However, not everyone has the opportunity to travel, so another way to learn is through books, films, and other educational resources. There are many great books and films that explore different cultures around the world. For example, The Kite Runner by Khaled Hosseini explores the culture and history of Afghanistan, while the documentary Senna explores the culture and history of Brazil through the lens of Formula One racing. In addition to books and films, there are also many online resources that can help us learn more about geography and culture. For example, the website National Geographic offers a wealth of information about different regions of the world, including articles, videos, and photographs. In conclusion, geography and culture are fascinating subjects that offer us a better understanding of the world we live in by studying geography and culture. We can gain a deeper appreciation for the diversity and complexity of our planet and its people. We can learn to respect and appreciate the differences between people and cultures, and we can work towards creating a more peaceful and harmonious world. So, let's continue to explore and learn about the world around us. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, today I am here to discuss one of the most pressing issues that our planet faces today climate change and global warming. It is no secret that the world is currently facing a climate emergency, and we cannot afford to ignore it any longer. The scientific community has been warning us for decades about the impact that our actions are having on the environment, and it is high time that we start taking this issue seriously. Climate change refers to the long-term changes in the Earth's climate patterns. It is caused by the increase in greenhouse gases, primarily carbon dioxide, in the atmosphere. These greenhouse gases trap heat from the sun, which leads to a rise in global temperatures. Global warming, on the other hand, refers specifically to the increase in Earth's surface temperature due to the increase in greenhouse gases. The effects of climate change and global warming are far-reaching and can be felt in every corner of the world. Extreme weather events such as hurricanes, Droughts and floods are becoming more frequent and intense. Glaciers are melting, sea levels are rising, and entire ecosystems are being disrupted. The impact of climate change is not limited to the environment, and it also has a significant impact on human health, food.
food security, and the economy. The causes of climate change and global warming are largely human-made. We have been emitting greenhouse gases into the atmosphere at an unprecedented rate, primarily through the burning of fossil fuels, such as coal, oil, and gas. Deforestation, industrial processes, and agriculture also contribute to the release of greenhouse gases. If we continue on our current path, the consequences of climate change will only worsen. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, has warned that we have less than a decade to take action before the effects of climate change become irreversible. We need to act now if we want to prevent the worst-case scenarios from becoming a reality. So, what can we do to address climate change and global warming? The solution lies in reducing greenhouse gas emissions and transitioning to a more sustainable, low-carbon economy. This will require a collective effort from governments, businesses, and individuals. Governments have a crucial role to play in addressing climate change. They can enact policies and regulations that encourage the use of renewable energy sources, promote energy efficiency, and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. The Paris Agreement, signed by 197 countries, is an important step in the right direction. It aims to limit global warming to well below 2 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels, with a goal of limiting it to 1.5 degrees Celsius. However, more needs to be done to ensure that these targets are met. Businesses also have a responsibility to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions. They can do this by implementing sustainable practices, using renewable energy sources, and investing in clean technologies. Consumers can also play a role by making more sustainable choices in their daily lives, such as using public transport, reducing food waste, and consuming less meat. However, addressing climate change and global warming requires a collective effort from everyone. We need to work together to make the necessary changes to our lifestyle and economic systems. It is not too late to act, but we need to act fast. In conclusion, Climate change and global warming are among the most urgent challenges that our planet faces today. The consequences of inaction are severe and will be felt for generations to come. We need to take action now to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and transition to a more sustainable, low-carbon economy. This will require a collective effort from governments, businesses, and individuals. Let us work together to ensure a better future for ourselves and for the generations that will come after us. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Today, I would like to talk to you about the fascinating topic of the history and culture of ancient civilizations. Throughout history, there have been numerous civilizations that have emerged and made significant contributions to the world we live in today. From the ancient Greeks to the Romans, the Egyptians to the Chinese, each civilization has its unique story to tell. Let us begin by exploring the ancient Greeks. The Greeks are considered one of the most influential civilizations in history, and their contributions to literature, art, philosophy, and science are still felt today. The Greeks were known for their myths and legends, which helped shape their culture and beliefs. One of the most well-known Greek legends is that of the Trojan War, which has been retold through literature and movies for generations. In addition to their mythology, the Greeks were also known for their advancements in philosophy. Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle are among the most famous philosophers of all time, and their ideas have had a lasting impact on Western thought. The Greeks also made significant contributions to the field of science, particularly in mathematics. The concept of the Pythagorean theorem, for example, is still taught in schools today. Moving on to the Romans, they are another ancient civilization that made significant contributions to the world. The Romans were known for their military prowess and their extensive empire, which covered much of Europe, North Africa, and the Middle East. They were also known for their architecture, with structures such as the Colosseum and the Pantheon still standing today. 
One of the most significant contributions of the Romans was their legal system, which laid the foundation for modern law. The Romans also made significant advancements in engineering, particularly in the areas of aqueducts and roads. Their engineering feats are still impressive today, as many of their roads and aqueducts are still standing after centuries. Moving on to Egypt, it is another ancient civilization that has left an indelible mark on the world. The Egyptians are known for their pyramids, which were built as tombs for their pharaohs. These massive structures have fascinated people for centuries and have been the subject of numerous studies and theories. In addition to their pyramids, the Egyptians were also known for their art, particularly their hieroglyphics. These symbols were used to convey stories and information, and they are still being studied today. The Egyptians were also known for their religion, which was centered around a complex system of gods and goddesses. Finally, let us explore the ancient Chinese civilization. The Chinese were known for their technological advancements, particularly in the areas of agriculture and manufacturing. They were also known for their art, particularly their porcelain and silk, which were highly prized by people all over the world. The Chinese also made significant contributions to the field of medicine with the invention of acupuncture and herbal medicine. These practices are still used today and are considered effective in treating a variety of ailments. The Chinese were also known for their philosophy, particularly the teachings of Confucius, which emphasized the importance of ethics and morality. In conclusion, the history and culture of ancient civilizations have left an indelible mark on the world we live in today. From the Greeks to the Romans, the Egyptians to the Chinese, each civilization has its unique story to tell. Their contributions to literature, art, philosophy, science, and technology have had a lasting impact on the world, and their legacies continue to be studied and admired today. Thank you for listening. Ladies and gentlemen, students of all ages, I welcome you to this talk about tips for effective studying and time management. Whether you're in high school, college, or pursuing postgraduate studies, it is essential to develop good study habits to succeed in your academic pursuits. This talk will provide you with some tips and strategies that you can use to manage your time effectively and make the most of your study hours. First and foremost, it is important to have a clear understanding of your goals and objectives. You need to know what you want to achieve, why you want to achieve it, and how you are going to achieve it. Setting clear and specific goals will help you stay motivated, focused, and on track. Whether it is acing an exam, completing a project, or learning a new skill, Having a clear goal in mind will give you direction and purpose. Once you have set your goals, the next step is to create a study schedule. A study schedule is a plan that outlines the specific times and days that you will study, as well as the subjects or topics that you will cover. This schedule should be realistic and flexible, taking into account your other commitments such as work, family, and social activities. When creating your study schedule, Make sure to prioritize your most important tasks and allocate enough time for each task. This will help you avoid procrastination and ensure that you are making progress towards your goals. One of the most important tips for effective studying is to avoid multitasking. Multitasking may seem like a good way to get more done in less time, but in reality, it can be counterproductive. When you try to focus on multiple tasks at once, you end up spreading your attention and concentration too thin leading to reduced productivity and lower quality work. Instead, try to focus on one task at a time and give it your full attention. This will help you stay focused and engaged and ultimately lead to better results. Another important tip for effective studying is to take breaks. Taking regular breaks can help you recharge your energy and refocus your attention. It is recommended that you take a five to 10 minute break every hour of study time. During this break, you can stretch your legs, grab a snack, or do something that relaxes your mind, such as meditation or deep breathing exercises. By taking regular breaks, you can avoid burnout, reduce stress, and improve your overall productivity. In addition to taking breaks, it is also important to get enough sleep. Sleep is essential for our physical and mental health, and it plays a critical role in our ability to learn and retain information. 
It is recommended that adults get 7-9 hours of sleep each night, while children and teenagers need even more. Getting enough sleep will help you stay alert, focused, and ready to tackle your academic challenges. Another important aspect of effective studying is creating a conducive study environment. Your study environment should be quiet, comfortable, and free from distractions. This means turning off your phone, closing your social media tabs, and finding a quiet space where you can concentrate. It is also helpful to have all the necessary study materials within reach, such as textbooks, notes, and stationery. By creating a comfortable and distraction-free study environment, you can maximize your concentration and productivity. One of the most effective study techniques is active learning. Active learning involves engaging with the material in a way that promotes deeper understanding and retention. This can involve taking notes, summarizing the material, asking questions, or creating flashcards. By actively engaging with the material, you are more likely to remember it and be able to apply it to different situations. Finally, it is important to seek help when you need it. If you are struggling with a particular subject or topic, don't hesitate to ask for help. You can reach out to your teachers, tutors, classmates, or academic advisors for assistance. There is no shame in admitting that you need help, and seeking help early on can prevent small problems from becoming bigger ones. Additionally, working with others can help you gain new perspectives and learn new strategies for tackling difficult concepts. In addition to these tips for effective studying, time management is also an essential component of academic success. Time management involves the process of organizing and planning how to divide your time between different tasks and activities. Here are some time management tips that can help you make the most of your time. 1. Set priorities, determine which tasks are most important, and prioritize them accordingly. Focus on completing high-priority tasks first, and then move on to lower-priority tasks. 2. Use a planner. Use a planner or calendar to schedule your time and keep track of your commitments. Make sure to include study time, class time, work time, and any other important activities. 3. Create a to-do list. Create a daily to-do list of tasks that you need to complete. Make sure to prioritize the most important tasks and break larger tasks into smaller, more manageable chunks. 4. Avoid procrastination. Procrastination can be a major obstacle to effective time management. To avoid procrastination, break tasks into smaller, more manageable chunks and set deadlines for yourself. 5. Stay organized. Staying organized can help you save time and reduce stress. Keep your study materials, notes, and assignments organized and easily accessible. 6. Take advantage of downtime. Use downtime, such as waiting in line or commuting, to review notes, listen to educational podcasts, or complete smaller tasks. 7. Limit distractions. Distractions, such as social media, can eat up a lot of time. Try to limit distractions by turning off notifications and setting aside specific times to check social media. By implementing these time management tips, you can maximize your productivity, reduce stress, and achieve your academic goals. In conclusion, effective studying and time management are essential for academic success. By setting clear goals, creating a study schedule, avoiding multitasking, taking breaks, getting enough sleep, creating a conducive study environment, actively engaging with the material, seeking help when needed, and implementing time management strategies, you can make the most of your study hours and achieve your academic goals. Remember, success is not achieved overnight but through consistent effort, perseverance, and dedication. Good luck. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, and fellow cybersecurity experts, I am honored to speak to you today about the critical topic of cybersecurity and online safety. In an increasingly digital world, we are more reliant on technology than ever before, and the need for cybersecurity and online safety has never been more important. The rapid expansion of technology has brought numerous benefits to our lives, but it has also opened up new threats and risks. Cybersecurity threats are becoming increasingly sophisticated, and attacks on individuals, businesses, and governments are becoming more frequent and damaging. The cost of cybersecurity breaches is estimated to be in the billions of dollars each year, and the impact on individuals and society can be devastating. 
Cybersecurity and online safety is a broad topic that encompasses a wide range of issues, including data privacy, cybercrime, online fraud, and cyberbullying. In this speech, I will discuss the importance of cybersecurity and online safety and some of the measures that can be taken to protect ourselves and our organizations from cyber threats. Why is cybersecurity and online safety important? The importance of cybersecurity and online safety cannot be overstated. The rise of digital technology has transformed our lives from the way we work, communicate, shop, and even entertain ourselves. However, this has also opened up new risks and vulnerabilities, and we must take measures to protect ourselves and our data. Cybersecurity threats can come from a variety of sources, including hackers, cybercriminals, and even state-sponsored attacks. These attacks can take many forms, from phishing scams to malware infections to ransomware attacks. They can result in the theft of personal and financial information, the disruption of critical systems and infrastructure, and even physical harm in some cases. The impact of cybersecurity breaches can be severe, both in terms of financial losses and damage to reputation. In some cases, the damage can be irreparable, with companies and individuals losing their livelihoods or suffering long-term harm to their reputations. The loss of trust in online systems and technology can have a ripple effect on society as a whole, leading to a breakdown in communication and commerce. There are many measures that individuals and organizations can take to protect themselves from cyber threats. These range from simple measures like using strong passwords and updating software regularly to more advanced measures like implementing multi-factor authentication and using encryption. One of the most effective measures to protect cybersecurity and online safety is to increase awareness of the risks and threats. Individuals and organizations must understand the importance of cybersecurity and the impact that breaches can have. They must also be aware of the common types of cyber threats and how to recognize them. Education is also a critical factor in protecting cybersecurity and online safety. Individuals and organizations must be educated on best practices for cybersecurity and how to implement them effectively. This includes regular training on how to recognize and respond to cyber threats, as well as how to use technology safely and responsibly. Technology can also be used to enhance cybersecurity and online safety. There are many tools and solutions available that can help protect against cyber threats, including antivirus software, firewalls, and intrusion detection systems. Encryption can also be used to protect data and communications from interception and tampering. Another critical factor in protecting cybersecurity and online safety is to develop and implement robust policies and procedures. This includes policies for data handling, access control, and incident response. Organizations must also have a plan in place for responding to cyber threats, including procedures for investigating and mitigating the impact of breaches. In conclusion, Cybersecurity and online safety are critical issues that must be taken seriously by individuals and organizations alike. The rise of digital technology has brought many benefits to our lives, but it has also opened up new risks and vulnerabilities. Cybersecurity threats are becoming increasingly sophisticated and the impact of breaches can be severe. To protect against cyber threats, Individuals and organizations must take a comprehensive approach that includes increasing awareness, education, and the use of technology and policies. It is essential to prioritize cybersecurity and online safety to ensure the protection of personal and financial information, critical systems and infrastructure, and the trust in online systems and technology. At the same time, Cybersecurity and online safety are not just the responsibility of individuals and organizations, but also a global issue that requires cooperation and collaboration. Governments, international organizations, and the private sector must work together to create a safe and secure digital environment that enables innovation, growth, and development while protecting against cyber threats. Ladies and gentlemen, 
It is my pleasure to speak to you today about a topic that is essential to the success of any business, basic accounting and financial statements. Accounting is the language of business, and understanding it is crucial for anyone who wants to make informed financial decisions. In this speech, I will explain what accounting is, why it is important, and how financial statements are used to measure a company's financial health. First, let us begin with the basics. Accounting is the process of recording, classifying, and summarizing financial transactions to provide information that is useful in making business decisions. There are two types of accounting, financial accounting and managerial accounting. Financial accounting is concerned with the preparation of financial statements for external users such as investors, creditors, and regulators. Managerial accounting, on the other hand, is concerned with providing information to internal users, such as managers, to help them make better business decisions. Now that we know what accounting is, let us talk about why it is important. Accounting provides a way to track the financial performance of a business. By recording and classifying transactions, accounting helps to measure a company's profitability. Liquidity Profitability refers to the ability of a company to generate income, while liquidity refers to the ability of a company to meet its short-term obligations. Solvency, on the other hand, refers to the ability of a company to meet its long-term obligations. Financial statements are the primary means by which accounting information is communicated to external users. There are four main financial statements. The income statement, the balance sheet, the statement of cash flows, and the statement of changes in equity. The income statement, also known as the profit and loss statement, shows a company's revenues and expenses over a period of time, typically a month, a quarter, or a year. The difference between revenues and expenses is the net income or loss. The income statement is important because it shows how much money a company has earned or lost during a specific period of time. The balance sheet shows a company's assets, liabilities, and equity at a specific point in time. Assets are things that a company owns, such as cash, inventory, and property. Liabilities are things that a company owes, such as loans and accounts payable. Equity represents the residual interest in the assets of a company after deducting liabilities. The balance sheet is important because it shows the financial position of a company at a specific point in time. The statement of cash flows shows the inflows and outflows of cash during a period of time. Cash inflows come from sources such as sales and investments, while cash outflows go to expenses such as rent and payroll. The statement of cash flows is important because it shows how much cash a company has generated or used during a specific period of time. The statement of changes in equity shows the changes in equity over a period of time. Equity changes come from sources such as net income, stock issuances, and dividends. The statement of changes in equity is important because it shows how the equity of a company has changed over time. Together, these financial statements provide a comprehensive picture of a company's financial health. They help external users make informed decisions about investing in or lending to a company. They also help internal users make informed decisions about how to manage a company's resources. In addition to financial statements, accounting also involves the use of financial ratios to measure a company's financial performance. Financial ratios are calculations that use financial statement data to measure a company's profitability, liquidity, and solvency. For example, the return on investment ROI, ratio measures a company's profitability by comparing its net income to its total assets. The current ratio measures a company's liquidity by comparing its current assets to its current liabilities. The debt to equity ratio measures a company's solvency by comparing its total liabilities to its total equity. Financial ratios can be used to compare a company's financial performance to industry benchmarks or to its own past performance. They can also be used to identify areas of strength and weakness in a company's financial position. Now that we have a basic understanding of accounting and financial statements, let us consider some practical applications of this knowledge. First, if you are an entrepreneur or small business owner, understanding accounting is essential to managing your business effectively. By keeping accurate records and understanding your financial statements, you can make informed decisions about pricing, inventory management, and investment opportunities. Second, if you are an investor, understanding financial statements is essential to making informed investment decisions. By analyzing a company's financial statements and financial ratios, you can determine whether the company is a good investment opportunity. 
You can also use financial statements to monitor the financial health of companies in which you have already invested. Third, if you are a student or professional in the field of finance or accounting, understanding basic accounting and financial statements is essential to your career development. By mastering the language of business, you can become a valuable asset to any organization. In conclusion, basic accounting and financial statements are essential to the success of any business. By recording and classifying financial transactions, accounting provides a way to track a company's financial performance. Financial statements such as the income statement, balance sheet, statement of cash flows, and statement of changes in equity provide a comprehensive picture of a company's financial health. Financial ratios can be used to measure a company's profitability, liquidity, and solvency. Understanding accounting and financial statements is essential to managing a business effectively, making informed investment decisions, and developing a successful career in finance or accounting. Thank you for your attention. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I want to talk to you about developing critical thinking and problem-solving skills. In today's world, we face many challenges, both at work and in our personal lives. Developing critical thinking and problem-solving skills is essential to overcome these challenges and succeed in both areas. Critical thinking is the ability to analyze and evaluate information to form judgments or make decisions. Problem solving is the process of finding a solution to a problem or challenge. Developing these skills requires practice, patience, and a willingness to learn. In this speech, I will outline the benefits of developing these skills and provide tips for improving them. Number one benefits of developing critical thinking and problem solving skills. There are numerous benefits to developing critical thinking and problem-solving skills, including the following. Improved decision-making. Critical thinking enables individuals to analyze information and evaluate its credibility and relevance. This skill helps individuals make informed decisions that are based on facts and evidence. By making better decisions, individuals can avoid costly mistakes and improve their chances of success. Increased creativity. Problem solving requires individuals to think creatively and come up with innovative solutions. By developing problem solving skills, individuals can generate new ideas and approaches to old problems. This creativity can lead to breakthroughs in various fields such as science, technology, and art. Better communication. Critical thinking and problem-solving skills enable individuals to communicate effectively. By analyzing information and formulating arguments, individuals can present their ideas clearly and persuasively. This skill is essential in many fields, such as sales, marketing, and politics. Improved leadership. Leadership requires individuals to make decisions and solve problems. By developing critical thinking and problem-solving skills, individuals can become better leaders. They can make informed decisions, delegate tasks effectively, and inspire their team to achieve its goals. Number 2. Tips for Developing Critical Thinking and Problem-Solving Skills Developing critical thinking and problem-solving skills requires practice and patience. Here are some tips for improving these skills. Ask questions. Asking questions is an essential part of critical thinking. It helps individuals gather information and evaluate its credibility and relevance. When faced with a problem or challenge, individuals should ask questions such as, what is the problem? What are the possible solutions? What are the pros and cons of each solution? What evidence supports each solution? What are the risks and benefits of each solution? By asking these questions, individuals can develop a deeper understanding of the problem and generate new ideas for solving it. Analyze information. Analyzing information is another critical thinking skill. It involves evaluating the credibility and relevance of information and drawing conclusions based on that analysis. To analyze information effectively, individuals should identify the source of the information. Evaluate the credibility of the source. Evaluate the relevance of the information to the problem. 
compare the information to other sources to identify inconsistencies and biases. Draw conclusions based on the analysis. By analyzing information in this way, individuals can make informed decisions and solve problems effectively. Generate ideas. Generating ideas is an essential part of problem solving. It involves thinking creatively and coming up with innovative solutions. To generate ideas effectively, individuals should brainstorm a list of possible solutions. Encourage creativity by allowing all ideas to be expressed. Evaluate each idea based on its feasibility and potential effectiveness. Combine and refine ideas to create a comprehensive solution. By generating ideas in this way, individuals can find innovative solutions to even the most challenging problems. Practice. Developing critical thinking and problem-solving skills requires practice. Individuals should look for opportunities to practice these skills in their daily lives. For example, they could read articles and analyze the information presented, engage in debates or discussions to practice forming and presenting arguments, play strategy games that require problem-solving skills, participate in group projects or work on complex tasks to practice collaboration and decision-making. By practicing these skills regularly, individuals can develop them to a higher level of proficiency. Seek feedback. Finally, seeking feedback is an essential part of developing critical thinking and problem-solving skills. Individuals should ask for feedback from others on their ideas and decision-making processes. This feedback can help individuals identify areas for improvement and refine their skills further. Feedback can also help individuals identify biases or blind spots they may have overlooked. By seeking feedback, individuals can gain new perspectives and ideas that can lead to better decision-making and problem-solving. In conclusion, developing critical thinking and problem-solving skills is essential for success in both personal and professional life. These skills enable individuals to make better decisions, think creatively, communicate effectively, and become better leaders. By practicing the tips outlined in this speech, individuals can improve their critical thinking and problem-solving skills and achieve greater success in all areas of life. Thank you for your attention, and I hope this speech has been informative and helpful. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I'm honored to speak with you about a topic that has fascinated linguists, anthropologists, and historians alike for centuries, the history and evolution of human languages. Language is a defining characteristic of our species. It is the vehicle through which we communicate our thoughts, ideas, and emotions, and it has played a critical role in shaping the course of human history. From the earliest spoken languages to the sophisticated systems of writing and speech we have today, the evolution of human languages is a rich and complex tapestry that has unfolded over thousands of years. To understand the evolution of human languages, we must first go back to the very beginning of our species' history. Our earliest ancestors likely communicated through a series of grunts, gestures, and other nonverbal cues. Over time, these primitive forms of communication began to evolve into more complex systems of vocalizations, as our ancestors' brains and vocal apparatuses became more sophisticated. The earliest recorded evidence of human language comes from the cave paintings and artifacts of our Neanderthal cousins, who lived in Europe and parts of Asia between 400,000 and 40,000 years ago. While we cannot say for certain what their language sounded like or how it functioned, we do know that they had the capacity for complex communication and likely used some form of language to communicate with one another. As our species continued to evolve and spread across the globe, different groups of humans developed their own unique languages, each with its own grammatical structures, vocabularies, and phonetic systems. Some of these early languages were spoken by only a few hundred people, while others, such as Chinese and Sanskrit, eventually became the foundations of entire civilizations. 
One of the most fascinating aspects of human language evolution is the role that geography and environment have played in shaping the development of different languages. For example, languages spoken in mountainous regions tend to have more complex phonetic systems, while those spoken in flat, open areas tend to have simpler structures. Similarly, languages spoken in regions with more extreme climates, such as deserts or tropical rainforests, often have unique vocabularies and grammatical structures that reflect the specific challenges of living in those environments. As human societies became more complex, so too did their languages. Many of the world's most ancient languages, such as Sumerian, Ancient Greek, and Latin, are incredibly complex and nuanced, with extensive grammatical rules and complex vocabularies. These languages were not only used for communication, but also served as vehicles for literature, philosophy, and scientific inquiry. Over time, some of these ancient languages gave rise to new ones, as different groups of people interacted and exchanged ideas. For example, Latin, the language of the Roman Empire, evolved into a variety of Romance languages, including Italian, Spanish, Portuguese, and French. Similarly, the ancient Indian language of Sanskrit gave rise to several modern languages, including Hindi and Bengali. As our understanding of language and communication has evolved, so too has our ability to study and analyze different languages. In the modern era, linguists have developed a wide range of tools and techniques for studying and categorizing different languages, including phonetics, morphology, syntax, and semantics. This has allowed us to gain a deeper understanding of the ways in which languages evolve over time and the many factors that can influence their development. Today, there are more than 7,000 distinct languages spoken around the world, each with its own unique history and evolution. While some languages are spoken by millions of people, others are spoken by only a handful of individuals, and many are in danger of dying out completely. This is a tragedy not only for the communities that speak these languages, but for all of humanity, as each language represents a unique perspective on the world and the human experience. In recent years, there has been a growing recognition of the importance of preserving linguistic diversity, and efforts have been made to document and revitalize endangered languages. This is not only a matter of cultural preservation, but also has practical implications for fields such as medicine, botany, and ecology, where local knowledge and terminology are critical for understanding and treating specific conditions. At the same time, new technologies and forms of communication are rapidly transforming the way we use language. The rise of the Internet, social media, and other digital platforms has created new opportunities for people to communicate across linguistic and cultural boundaries and has given rise to new forms of hybrid languages and linguistic practices. While this has the potential to enrich our understanding and appreciation of language, it also raises important questions about the future of human communication. As we continue to develop new technologies and ways of interacting, it is important that we remain mindful of the ways in which language shapes our perceptions and experiences of the world and work to ensure that linguistic diversity and cultural richness are not lost in the process. In conclusion, the history and evolution of human languages is a fascinating and complex topic, one that has shaped the course of human history and continues to shape our understanding of the world today. From the earliest grunts and gestures of our ancestors to the sophisticated systems of writing and speech we have today, language has been a defining characteristic of our species, one that reflects our capacity for creativity, complexity, and innovation. As we continue to explore the many facets of language and communication, it is important that we remain mindful of the ways in which language shapes our perceptions and experiences of the world and work to ensure that linguistic diversity and cultural richness are preserved for future generations. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, 
esteemed guests, and fellow students, it is my pleasure to speak to you today about the fundamental laws of motion and the pivotal role of physics in our lives. Physics, one of the oldest academic disciplines, has been the backbone of scientific progress and has helped humanity to understand and manipulate the natural world. From the motion of celestial bodies to the behavior of subatomic particles, physics has given us a profound insight into the workings of the universe. Today, we will focus on the laws of motion, which were formulated by the famous scientist Isaac Newton, and their applications in our everyday lives. The laws of motion, also known as Newton's laws, were first introduced in 1687 in Newton's monumental work. The Principia Mathematica, these laws provide the foundation for classical mechanics and describe the behavior of objects in motion. They explain how forces act on objects to cause motion and how objects resist motion when no force is applied. The laws of motion have been instrumental in the development of technology and have played a vital role in shaping our understanding of the world. Newton's first law of motion, also known as the law of inertia, states that an object at rest will remain at rest and an object in motion will continue in motion at a constant velocity unless acted upon by an external force. In simpler terms, this law states that objects tend to resist changes in motion. For instance, if you push a stationary object, it will move in the direction of the force. On the other hand, if you apply a force to a moving object, it will change direction or speed. Newton's second law of motion states that the force acting on an object is directly proportional to its mass and acceleration. In other words, the more massive an object is, the harder it is to accelerate it. If the same force is applied to two objects of different masses, the object with greater mass will experience less acceleration than the lighter object. This law can be summarized by the formula F equals ma, where F is the force applied, m is the mass of the object, and A is the acceleration produced. Finally, Newton's third law of motion states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. This law explains that when two objects interact, they exert equal and opposite forces on each other. For instance, when a book is placed on a table, the book exerts a downward force on the table, and the table exerts an upward force on the book. This law is essential in understanding the dynamics of collisions and explosions. The laws of motion have numerous applications in our daily lives, from the way we walk and run to the operation of vehicles and machines. For instance, the functioning of a car engine is based on the laws of motion. The engine applies a force to the wheels, which causes the car to move forward. The brakes apply an opposite force to slow down or stop the car. Similarly, the operation of airplanes, boats, and rockets is based on the principles of the laws of motion. Another example of the laws of motion in action is sports. Almost all sports, including running, jumping, throwing, and hitting, involve the application of the laws of motion. Athletes use the laws of motion to maximize their performance and achieve their goals. For instance, a sprinter applies a force to the ground with their legs, which propels them forward. A javelin thrower uses the principles of the laws of motion to propel the javelin as far as possible. The laws of motion also play a vital role in the field of engineering. Engineers use the laws of motion to design and build machines that operate efficiently and safely. For instance, a roller coaster ride is designed based on the principles of the laws of motion. The roller coaster car gains momentum as it moves down the first hill, and the laws of motion dictate how it will continue to move through the rest of the track. Engineers also use the laws of motion to design bridges, buildings, and other structures to withstand forces and remain stable. In addition to the practical applications, the laws of motion have also had a significant impact on the way we view the world. Newton's laws of motion challenged the prevailing view at the time that the natural world was governed by supernatural forces. The laws of motion provided a scientific explanation for the workings of the universe and helped to usher in the Age of Enlightenment which placed reason and empirical evidence at the forefront of scientific inquiry. Moreover, the laws of motion have led to further discoveries in physics, including the theory of relativity, quantum mechanics, and the study of subatomic particles. The laws of motion also apply to the behavior of celestial bodies, leading to the discovery of the laws of planetary motion and the gravitational force. Despite the enormous advancements that have been made through the study of physics, there is still much to be learned. 
There are still many unanswered questions, such as the nature of dark matter and dark energy, the unification of the forces of nature, and the origins of the universe itself. However, it is the continued study of the laws of motion and other aspects of physics that will help to answer these questions and push the boundaries of scientific knowledge. In conclusion, the laws of motion are a fundamental aspect of physics and have been essential in shaping our understanding of the natural world. These laws have practical applications in engineering, technology, and sports, and have had a profound impact on the way we view the universe. The continued study of the laws of motion and other aspects of physics will lead to further advancements and discoveries that will benefit humanity for generations to come. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I am here to talk to you about a topic that is often dreaded by many people, yet is an essential skill in both personal and professional life, public speaking and presentation skills. Whether you are a student, a business professional, a community leader, or simply someone who wants to improve your communication skills, mastering the art of public speaking and delivering effective presentation, one stem scavios, kimbekiavo skills, kimbekangidire. First, let us define what we mean by public speaking. Public speaking is the act of delivering a speech or presentation to an audience, usually in a formal setting. It can take many forms, from a business pitch to a wedding toast, from a classroom presentation to a political campaign speech. Regardless of the context, the goal of public speaking is to convey a message, share knowledge or ideas, inspire, motivate, or persuade the audience. Now, let us talk about why public speaking and presentation skills matter. Effective public speaking can have a profound impact on your personal and professional life. It can help you build confidence, enhance your credibility, improve your leadership and interpersonal skills, and advance your career. In today's highly competitive world, being able to communicate your ideas clearly and persuasively is essential to success in almost any field. So, how can we improve our public speaking and presentation skills? The good news is that these skills can be learned and improved, practice and guidance. Here are some tips that can help you become a better public speaker and presenter. 1. Know your audience before you start preparing your speech or presentation. Think about who your audience is and what they are interested in. What are their expectations, needs, and values? Tailor your message and delivery style to the audience to make sure you're engaging and relevant. 2. Prepare and practice. The key to a successful presentation is preparation. Take the time to research your topic, organize your thoughts, and create a clear and concise outline. Practice your delivery, paying attention to your tone, pace, and body language. Rehearse in front of a mirror, record yourself, or ask a trusted friend or colleague for feedback. 3. Use visuals. Visual aids such as slides, charts, or videos can enhance your presentation and help your audience understand your message. Better, make sure your visuals are clear, concise, and relevant, and use them sparingly to avoid overwhelming or distracting the audience. 4. Engage your audience. A good speaker knows how to capture and maintain the audience's attention. Use storytelling, humor, rhetorical questions, or other techniques to engage your audience and make your message memorable. Encourage interaction and feedback and be open to questions and comments. 5. Be confident and authentic. The most effective speakers are those who are confident, passionate, and authentic. Believe in your message and let your personality and enthusiasm shine through. Speak naturally and use your own voice and style, rather than trying to mimic someone else's. 6. Manage your nerves. Even experienced speakers can feel nervous before a presentation. To manage your nerves, try deep breathing, visualization, or other relaxation techniques. Focus on your message and your audience, rather than on yourself, and remember that it is normal to make mistakes. 7. Learn from feedback after your presentation. Ask for feedback from your audience or from someone who observed you. Be open to constructive criticism and use it to improve your skills for your next presentation. In addition to these tips, there are many resources available for those who want to improve their public speaking and presentation skills. You can attend workshops, take courses, join a public speaking club, or work with a coach or mentor. You can also read books watch videos, or listen to podcasts on the subject. There are numerous online resources, such as TED Talks, Toastmasters International, and Coursera, 
that offer free or low-cost training in public speaking and presentation skills. It is also important to note that public speaking and presentation skills are not only important in the professional world, but also in our personal lives. We all have to speak in front of others at some point, whether it is at a family gathering, a social event, or a community meeting. By improving our communication skills, we can better express ourselves, connect with others, and make a positive impact in our communities. In conclusion, public speaking and presentation skills are essential skills that can benefit us in both personal and professional life. By practicing and improving these skills, we can build confidence, enhance our credibility, and advance our careers. Remember to know your audience, prepare and practice, use visuals, engage your audience, be confident and authentic, manage your nerves and learn from feedback. With dedication and effort, anyone can become a skilled and effective public speaker. Thank you for listening. Today, I want to talk about a topic that has been a topic of discussion for many years now, and that is the impact of technology on modern society. Technology has revolutionized our lives in countless ways and has changed the way we live, work, and communicate. It has transformed our society, and we can no longer imagine a world without technology. In this speech, I will discuss the various ways in which technology has impacted our modern society. One of the most significant impacts of technology on modern society is on communication. Technology has made communication much more accessible and convenient. With the invention of smartphones, laptops, and tablets, we can now connect with people from anywhere in the world instantly. We can send messages, make voice and video calls, and even hold virtual meetings. Social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter have also transformed the way we communicate with each other. These platforms have made it easier to connect with people and share information. They have also given rise to new forms of communication, such as influencer marketing and online activism. However, there are also negative impacts of technology on communication. Social media platforms have given rise to cyberbullying and online harassment. They have also made it easier for misinformation and fake news to spread, leading to a rise in conspiracy theories and distrust in institutions. Technology has also transformed the way we work. With the rise of automation and artificial intelligence, many jobs have become more efficient and streamlined. For example, manufacturing jobs that used to require manual labor can now be done by machines. This has led to increased productivity and reduced costs for businesses. However, technology has also led to job displacement, as many jobs that were once done by humans are now being done by machines. This has led to concerns about job security and income inequality. Additionally, the rise of the gig economy has created new forms of work that are often insecure and offer little job security or benefits. Technology has also transformed the way we learn. With the rise of online learning platforms like Coursera and Khan Academy, people can now access educational content from anywhere in the world. This has made education more accessible and has democratized knowledge. However, there are also concerns about the quality of online education and the potential for cheating. Additionally, the rise of online education has led to a decline in funding for traditional brick and mortar schools and universities. Technology has also had a significant impact on healthcare, with the rise of medical technology and digital health. We can now diagnose and treat diseases more effectively than ever before. For example, telemedicine has made it possible to consult with doctors remotely, making healthcare more accessible and convenient. However, there are also concerns about the impact of technology on our physical and mental health. The rise of social media has been linked to increased rates of anxiety and depression, and the overuse of technology has been linked to issues such as eye strain and sleep disorders. Finally, technology has had a profound impact on society as a whole. It has brought people closer together, breaking down geographic and cultural barriers. It has also given rise to new forms of entertainment and art, such as video games and digital art. However, 
technology has also led to a decline in face-to-face -face interactions, leading to feelings of loneliness and isolation. It has also led to a rise in addiction to technology and social media as people become increasingly reliant on their devices. In conclusion, the impact of technology on modern society is significant and multifaceted. It has transformed the way we communicate, work, learn, and access healthcare. While there are many positive impacts of technology, such as increased productivity and accessibility, there are also negative impacts, such as job displacement, cyberbullying, and addiction. As we continue to rely on technology more and more, it is important that we consider its impact on our society and take steps to mitigate its negative effects. Ladies and gentlemen, today, I would like to talk to you about an issue that affects all of us, mental health and self-care. Mental health refers to the emotional, psychological, and social well-being of an individual. It is just as important as physical health, and neglecting it can have devastating consequences. The World Health Organization defines mental health as a state of well-being in which an individual realizes his or her own abilities, can cope with the normal stresses of life, can work productively and fruitfully, and is able to make a contribution to his or her community. Unfortunately, many people struggle to achieve this state of well-being due to various reasons such as work stress, personal problems, financial issues, or even global events like pandemics. Self-care is another crucial aspect of maintaining good mental health. It refers to the actions that an individual takes to maintain or improve their physical, mental, and emotional well-being. Self-care activities include things like exercise, eating a balanced diet, getting enough sleep, taking time to relax, engaging in hobbies, and seeking professional help when necessary. Why is mental health and self-care so important? Mental health and self-care are critical to living a healthy and happy life. Good mental health allows us to cope with the challenges of life, build strong relationships, and contribute to our communities. On the other hand, neglecting mental health can lead to a wide range of problems such as anxiety, depression, stress, and even physical health issues. Self-care, on the other hand, is important because it helps us maintain good mental and physical health. It allows us to recharge our batteries, reduce stress, and prevent burnout. Taking care of ourselves helps us be more productive and engaged in our daily lives, and it can also improve our relationships with others. Unfortunately, many people neglect their mental health and self-care, either due to lack of awareness or because of societal pressure to prioritize work and productivity over personal well-being. This can lead to a vicious cycle of stress, burnout, and deteriorating mental and physical health. What can we do to prioritize mental health and self-care? Fortunately, there are many things we can do to prioritize our mental health and self-care. Here are a few suggestions. 1. Practice mindfulness. Mindfulness is the practice of being present and fully engaged in the moment. It can help reduce stress and improve our overall well-being. There are many ways to practice mindfulness such as meditation, yoga, or simply taking a walk in nature. 2. Get enough sleep. Sleep is crucial for good mental and physical health. Most adults need 7-9 hours of sleep per night, so it's important to make sleep a priority. 3. Exercise regularly. Exercise is not only good for physical health, but also for mental health. It can help reduce stress, improve mood, and boost self-confidence. Aim for at least 30 minutes of moderate exercise per day. 4. Eat a balanced diet. Eating a balanced diet with plenty of fruits, vegetables, and whole grains can help improve mental and physical health. Avoid processed foods and excessive sugar and caffeine. 5. Take breaks. It's important to take breaks throughout the day to recharge your batteries. This could mean taking a walk, reading a book, or simply sitting quietly and taking deep breaths. 6. Connect with others. Social support is crucial for good mental health. Make time to connect with friends and family, even if it's just a phone call or video chat. 7. Seek professional help. If you're struggling with mental health issues, don't hesitate to seek professional help. A mental health professional can provide support and guidance to help you improve your well-being. In conclusion, mental health and self-care are essential for living a healthy and happy life. We need to prioritize our well-being by practicing mindfulness, getting enough sleep, 
exercising regularly, eating a balanced diet, taking breaks, connecting with others, and seeking professional help when necessary. Good evening, everyone. As an aspiring writer, you are on a journey to craft stories and create narratives that capture the imagination of readers. You have the power to transport people to different worlds, introduce them to new characters, and evoke a range of emotions. However, this journey is not without its challenges. Writing requires dedication, discipline, and creativity. It can be frustrating, time-consuming, and at times, lonely. But don't be disheartened. There are plenty of tips and tricks to help you overcome these challenges and succeed in your writing journey. In this speech, I will share some writing and storytelling tips that I have learned over the years. These tips are based on my personal experience, as well as the advice of other successful writers. So let's get started. Tip 1. Read widely and frequently. One of the most important things you can do as an aspiring writer is to read widely and frequently. Reading helps you develop a sense of different writing styles, story structures, and character development. It exposes you to new ideas and ways of thinking, which can spark your creativity and help you find your own writing voice. Tip 2. Write every day. Writing is a skill that requires practice, just like any other skill. You can't become a great writer overnight, but you can improve your writing by writing every day. Even if it's just a few paragraphs or a journal entry, the act of writing regularly will help you develop your writing skills, improve your grammar, and sharpen your creativity. Tip 3. Set goals. Setting goals is an important part of any writing journey. Goals give you a sense of direction and help you stay focused. They also help you measure your progress and celebrate your achievements. Start by setting small goals, such as writing for 30 minutes a day, and gradually work your way up to bigger goals, such as finishing a novel. Tip 4. Create an outline. Before you start writing, create an outline of your story. This will help you organize your thoughts and ideas and ensure that your story has a clear beginning, middle, and end. Your outline doesn't have to be detailed, but it should include the main plot points, character arcs, and any major themes or motifs. Tippy 5. Show, don't tell. One of the most common writing mistakes is telling instead of showing. When you tell your reader something, you are simply stating a fact. When you show your reader something, you are using sensory details and vivid descriptions to bring your story to life. For example, instead of saying John was sad, you could show John's sadness by describing how he slumped his shoulders, avoided eye contact, and spoke in a quiet voice. Tip 6. Develop your characters. Characters are the heart and soul of any story. As a writer, it's your job to create characters that are interesting, relatable, and believable. Take the time to develop your characters by giving them backstories, motivations, and flaws. Make sure they have unique voices and personalities and that their actions are consistent with their personalities. Tip 7. Edit and revise. Writing is a process, and part of that process is editing and revising. Once you have a rough draft of your story, go back and read it with a critical eye. Look for areas where the story could be improved, such as plot holes, pacing issues, or inconsistencies. Be willing to make changes and revisions to improve your story. Tip 8. Join a writing group. Writing can be a lonely activity, but it doesn't have to be. Joining a writing group can provide you with valuable feedback, support, and inspiration. You can also learn from other writers and get new ideas for your own writing. Look for writing groups in your local community or online writing communities where you can connect with other aspiring writers and share your work. Tip 9. Experiment with different genres and styles. As a writer, it's important to be open to experimentation. Don't be afraid to try out different genres and styles of writing. This can help you find your own unique voice and style. Experimenting can also help you break out of your comfort zone and explore new ideas and themes. Tip 10. Take breaks and practice self-care. Writing can be a mentally and emotionally taxing activity. It's important to take breaks and practice self-care to avoid burnout. This could mean taking a walk, practicing meditation, or engaging in a creative activity that is not writing. Make sure you are taking care of your physical and mental health so that you can continue to write and create without sacrificing your well-being. In conclusion, writing and storytelling are both an art and a craft. It takes time, 
dedication, and hard work to develop your skills and find your own voice. Remember to read widely, write every day, set goals, create outlines, show instead of tell, develop your characters, edit and revise, join writing groups, experiment with different genres and styles, and practice self-care. With these tips and a lot of perseverance, you can succeed in your writing journey and create stories that captivate and inspire readers. Thank you for listening.